Remember that spring we watched in episode 19? We didn't watch it for very long. If you let the spring continue to oscillate for a while, air resistance comes into play. The force of air resistance always points opposite of the block's velocity, which means there are four combinations of how it can interact with the force from the spring. We can have the air resistance pushing up and the spring force pulling up. We can have the air resistance pushing down and the spring force pulling up. We can have the air resistance pushing down and the spring force pulling down. And we can have the air resistance pushing up and the spring force pulling down. And of course, in every case, the weight of the block pulls downward. Here we have the same code we used in episode 19, but this time we've included the force of air resistance in the total force. Calculating the force of air resistance requires three features. First is the velocity of the block. The faster the block moves through the air, the stronger the air will push back against its motion. Second, we have a drag coefficient. This constant value tells you how rough the collisions are between the block and the air particles. A very slick and aerodynamic block would have a low drag coefficient, while a rough and squarish block would have a high drag coefficient. We'll play around with different values of the drag coefficient in a minute. Lastly, we have a negative sign out front to guarantee that the force of air resistance always points opposite of the velocity. Running the code with a small value for the drag coefficient shows similar behavior to what we saw before with the block oscillating up and down. But the distance over which the block oscillates decreases because air resistance is always working to slow the block. If we increase the value of the drag coefficient, we can see the oscillations die down even faster. We can't really learn much about this behavior just by watching the animation, so next we'll add a graph to help us track the motion in greater detail. Creating a graph in vPython requires two steps. First, we need to create and name something called a g-curve. This graphical curve is a record of the data points that we want to graph. To create a g-curve, all you need to do is specify a color for the graph. Then, we save the g-curve with a name that we can reference later. There are more options that you can include in a g-curve, which you'll learn about in the activity at the link in the description below. The second step in creating a graph is to add data points to the graph. We do this using the plot command attached to this g-curve. First, type the name of the g-curve that you saved earlier. Then, add dot plot to the name of the g-curve. Then, inside a pair of parentheses, list the independent variable, then a comma, then the dependent variable. In this case, we'll use time as our independent variable and the block's y position as our dependent variable. Each time the computer repeats the loop, it will add one more data point to the graph, representing the latest update to the block's motion. The resulting graph shows a lot more information about what's going on with our spring. We do still have the oscillations that we saw before, but we can see that their amplitude is decaying. In fact, you could trace out the peaks of this graph and get an exponential curve, which you'll explore more in the activities below. If we increase the drag coefficient, we can see the peaks decay faster. In fact, if we increase the drag coefficient high enough, we can see a graph with no oscillations at all, just a single swing toward equilibrium. These behaviors are so different that we give them special names. When the drag coefficient is so large that our block can't complete any oscillations, we say that the spring is overdamped. But when the drag coefficient is weak enough to allow our block to oscillate, we say that the spring is underdamped. You have now learned how air resistance impacts the oscillations of a spring. You'll explore more about the differences between underdamped and overdamped springs in the activities at the link in the description below.